Okay guys, in this lesson we're going to talk about the speech communication process model. Uh, this entails with part of the business communication curriculum from chapter one. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started today. So let's get, let's begin. All right, so the speech communication process model. So let's first begin with the basic understanding of communication. Uh, communication by definition is changing with technology. Uh, if you look right now with how communication is going, you know you have Twitter, you have Instagram, Facebook, text messages, emails. The way we communicate is drastically changing. It used to be you would just go and talk to someone face to face, and now we can have Skype meetings. Uh, you know, we have businesses that can do conference calls with 10 different people at one time. Communication is drastically changing. Now, what we have to understand is that despite all the changes in communication, that face to face communication is always and will never change to be the best type of communication out there, okay? You, you lose a lot of communication when you're not doing face-to-face -face communication, and we'll talk about that later. Um, and further, <clears throat> we know from studies the most successful individuals have great communication skills, okay? If you look at some of the largest and, and uh, you know, the most successful individuals in the United States today, Look at Barack Obama, look at Steve Jobs, um, look at Bill Clinton, um, look at you know, even, you know, the, the Bill Gates. All these individuals had great communication skills. Donald Trump, I mean, you know, as much as you may or may not like him, had good communication skills. Okay, the people who are in politics today, in order for you to survive in politics, you have to have great communication skills. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very important thing for you to know because the cusp of the, the most important thing for you to know today is that communication drives everything. In fact, there have been studies done about high school students and next to you guys in high school not having enough uh, relational skills, you guys cannot communicate well with others. Now, generally speaking though, people with these good communication skills Are more likely to get promoted, uh, more likely to have happy relationships, and a much happier life. And so we know these people have better lives. We know these people have better relationships because better communication skills lead to much deeper, more impactful relationships. We know these people have more friends, have more opportunities, get promoted in what they're doing. You know, businesses look at the way that managers communicate with their employees. This is very, very important. You're more likely to get a job based on your communication abilities uh, than anything else. And so communication is so, so important. Now, we know that communication is defined as a free exchange of ideas. It's a back and forth kind of process. Think of communication like a tennis match, if you, if you will. Okay? One person communicates, another person communicates back. Okay? It's a back and forth process, just like a, a really good form of a tennis match. Now... I'll give you a minute to so-called a sin, but what we're trying to begin the course with the basic understanding is not only is communication changing, okay, you have text messages, emails, etc., but what we still have to understand is that face-to-face -face is always going to be the best. We know that people who can communicate well are successful in life, and we know that communication is basically like a tennis match, a back-and-forth free exchange of ideas, okay? If you need a little more time, uh, the substitute teacher can go ahead and press pause now. Uh, if we're all okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on. All right, now we're going to talk about the media richness theory. Uh, this is discovered by Daft and Langle. Uh, oftentimes on my test, ladies and gentlemen, I will put uh, who wrote this theory. Uh, so you'll want to go ahead and know the name Daft and Langle. Okay, because uh, I like to put those on my test. And my first test, generally speaking, folks, is the lowest performing test. Some people tend to not take this very seriously. My tests are difficult. They're application-based questions, and I ask a lot of very tough scenarios. So please, please, please keep in mind that uh, daft and lingual is very important, and understanding this model is important as well. Okay, so what we're going to look at now is communication and how well that communication works. What media richness theory says, Daft and Langle argued that communication can be effective and can be very rich. Now, if you look at the very top here, I'm gonna see if my pen works. Look at the very top here where I'm drawing, you see a green arrow there. And generally that is the richer, the more effective communication, right? When you think of richness, 
you know, I, whenever I think of richness, I tend to think of chocolate, right? Chocolate has a rich, very sweet, very savory flavor if it's rich, right? And that's always the best type of chocolate, at least in my opinion. Um, you know, or you can think of it in the terms of, of, of you know, money, right? If, you, if you're rich, you have more more money, when this age we think of rich, we think of more effective uh, when it comes to communication. So generally speaking, the richer mediums are oftentimes more effective, okay? And then of course, on the very bottom, you have the red, nasty, leaner mediums, okay? They're, they're very light in their communication. They don't have very much to them. And we know already that these are less effective. So what we look at in the daft and lingual media richness theory model is, Leaner communication, communication with not very much to it, obviously we know is less effective. If you want a career in public relations or in communication or even in the business world, it's very, very important to know which type of communication is most effective for you to reach your clients. Now, let's start at the very bottom. It's a very good place to start. So, let's look at the red section, okay? Is it the less effective and the leaner mediums, okay? What we know already is these unaddressed documents right here, the very bottom. Unaddressed documents consist of bulk mail, posters. These items don't have your name on it. That's why they're called unaddressed documents, okay? They don't say, hey Bob, come over here and look at me, or to Bob from this person, right? This is when you, you generally see this in like bulk mail, uh, movie posters, right? You don't you don't go to the movies and it says it says Susie watch the Hunger Games. No, it doesn't. It just says Hunger Games, right? Whether or not you want to watch it is up to you, but it doesn't scream out at you. Okay, it says what it needs to say, right? It says the movie title and then it's got a picture of probably you know the the superstar, uh, but it doesn't really communicate. Does it communicate the whole movie? No. Do you have the person who's in the movie telling you about the movie? No. So it's not a very rich form of communication. In fact, it's very, very lean. It's not very effective, right? Passing by a movie poster may not persuade you as much as a face-to-face -face conference with a character in the movie. Am I right? So uh, that's why unaddressed documents, bulk mail posters are generally not so good, right? Generally speaking, too, whenever you get bulk mail, what do you do? You, you look at it and you throw it in the trash because right, it's not to you. I know I do that. Whenever I check my mail and I get something you know, from some credit card company that says, you're pre-approved for a credit card, but they never say my name. They just say, you are pre-approved or to our valued friend. Uh, my favorite is to our friendly neighbor. Uh, from from oftentimes you get the little coupon books. They say, to our friendly neighbor. And it's not to me, so I don't care about it. Okay, going up the scale, now we're going into like the yellow section here, the, of the less effective, a little bit better than, than the unaddressed documents, is written addressed documents. Okay, now we know what makes it better already is that this is address, this is to somebody. Okay, um, and this generally entails letters or emails. Uh, I included text messages in here. Uh, because I feel like the, with the changing of technology for sure, I believe that text messages fall into uh, this written address documents, okay? Now, when looking at this, we know it's a little bit more effective, okay? But we know it's not the most effective or even the most rich, okay? Because you lose a lot of information in these written address documents. Now, think of communication in general, all right? I want you to think of you communicating with someone else face to face whether it's a teacher a friend a parent whatever you are in front of this person at the lunch table or whatever and you're talking to them okay now when you're thinking about this you you hear not only the words you see what this person's wearing you you notice their body language okay you notice the inflection in their voice okay and we'll talk about that in just a minute but you don't get that in written address documents right you just get Dear sir, or actually, that, that's, that would be unaddressed. You would say, Dear Bob, uh, this is your doctor, and I, I wanted to let you know that your test results came back and everything was great. Congratulations. Have a nice life. Right? I don't know. A doctor probably wouldn't say that. But the have a nice life part, you know, it could be have a nice life or it could be happy, have a nice life, right? But you don't hear the inflection within the letter, right? Same is true with an email. Uh, and text. Oh my goodness, text message. Don't get me started. In fact, we'll see a slide in just a minute and I'll, sh I'll tell you why I despise text messaging because you just, oh, it just bothers me. Okay, so moving right up the scale, you have a two-way radio and telephone. These kind of 
are one and the same, right? The better part of this is, think about it for a moment, uh, in telephone to a radio you can hear inflection, right? See if I can type that out. You hear inflection, you hear the sound of their voice. Voice patterns also helps. Um, all of this happens uh, in telephone to a radio. You still don't see the face, so don't see the body language, you still don't see the body cues, you don't see what they're wearing, all that kind of stuff. That's all really, really important for communication. Now, uh, think, of, think of it this way, okay? Um, some people do interviews uh, through phone. They do a preliminary interview through phone, right? You, you could be in your pajamas doing an interview through a telephone, or if you do an interview face to face, you know your dress communicates something. So you lose that 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 dress, your your uh, nonverbal communication through uh, this section here, telephone and two way radio. Now it gets a little bit better coming up. You know it's still a little yellow, but it's up 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 more towards more effective. Is video conferencing okay? Now in video conferencing, um, like Skype or FaceTime, I'm, I put that on the side here so you know. Um, generally speaking, you know, you are getting a lot of the same things you're getting in face-to-face. -face. These may or may not be face-to-face uh, -face like uh, like most video conferencing. You may think of like Skype and FaceTime, right? Because sometimes in video conferencing, it's a one-way conference call, right? Or, you know, it's not as good as face-to-face -face because, you know, you're generally, you know, chest up. You know, you kind of have neck and head when you're doing Skype and FaceTime, generally speaking. Now, I know you can pan the camera down. But for the most part, you're only getting a certain picture, certain square box picture, I'd like to say. Okay, so that's why video conferencing is slightly below face-to-face. -face. Now, we all know already that the most rich and the most effective is going to be our face-to-face -face communication. These are supposed to be stars, but in my failed drawing ability, they are not. Okay, face-to-face -face communication is always going to be the best. You're going to get all the communication that you need. You're going to get the vocal cues. You're going to get the nonverbal communication. You're going to get the body movement. You're going to get all of that in face-to-face -face communication, and that's what Daft and Langle argue uh, of what is the most richest, most effective communication medium, and that's going to be face-to-face -face communication. Okay. So with that said, um, if you need to take a pause, uh, we can. If not, I'm going to go ahead and move right along. All right. So I'll give you guys a moment to, to, to laugh at poor Humberto. By the way, um, just so you know a little about me and how I do things, on my tests, I like to use really weird names, um, like Humberto. So sorry if there's a Humberto in here, uh, but I, I use very weird names on my tests. In fact, right now as I'm recording this, I'm looking at a text message to make sure I get this right because I always get it wrong. Okay. So Humberto, this is this is um, this is this is um, Humberto uh, sending a text message. Now I think I got this backwards. Because Humberto is saying these things, but um, and so it really anyway it's, it's backwards. But let's just say this is Humberto. All right, so Humberto tells. Oops, Humberto is telling. Let's say this girl is named Lily. Sorry if I have a Lily here. I don't think Lily is a weird name. Most first name I thought of. Okay, let's just say Humberto is talking to Lily, and Humberto says "sup," and Lily says "nm." So you know, nothing much. And then Humberto says, want to go out tonight. Notice he, he stressed the tonight part. Um, and Lily says, lol. So she's laughing out loud and saying, not wit. Now, the H is not very important for Lily. Uh, not wit you. Um, now, Humberto can take this two ways, right? We know that Humberto can see this as a joke because she threw the LOL. Lol, not with you. Or it could be, ha ha. Haha, <laughs> devilish laugh, not with you, right? You see what I'm arguing here is that the inflection, the facial expression, had he been able to see her face, had he been able to, to hear her inflection of her voice, uh, Humberto would have probably known what Lily would have meant. And so this is where it leads to kind of weird texts, right? Uh, I really hate when people just go, K, period. That is the thing I hate the most. Because you don't know if they're angry, they're mad, they're just okay. Um, so anyway, that's my problem with text messaging. All right, so we're going to move on to talk about Dance's Communication Helix. Now, this is a, I really like this model. In fact, I believe that this is the true, true model for communication. Okay, This was discovered by Dance in 1967. It's a very old model, but I believe it's still relevant today. Okay, what Dance said 
is he said that communication is like a spiral, like a helix. Okay.